Ex-President Trump was out with fresh, new, shiny attacks over the weekend on Jack Smith's documents investigation, accusing President Joe Biden of being improperly involved in it. Over reports that a Justice Department investigator had a meeting at the White House in March ahead of Trump's June indictment. Today, The Washington Post has new reporting on the meeting that dispels this latest attempt at disinformation and at discrediting the investigation. According to The Post's reporting, quote, a federal prosecutor investigating Donald Trump's alleged mishandling of classified materials went to the White House in March to interview a staffer as part of the probe. They add that the March meeting between Jay Bratt, a senior counterintelligence supervisor at DOJ, and the White House staffer was, quote, a standard part of the investigation, according to two people familiar with the meeting who spoke anonymously. And this, quote, the session focused on events that occurred during the Trump administration and, according to one of the two people, was about the handling of boxes while Trump was president. Joining our coverage, former Deputy Assistant Attorney General and former U.S. Attorney Harry Lippman, Molly and Paul are still with us. Harry, this, this, this careful sort of protection of whoever this person was reminds me of those jokes about there's a car crash and they take them to the hospital and the surgeon is a, you know, who's the surgeon, the mom of the, you know, you try to figure out who this person is and isn't. It's clearly, or it appears to be, either someone with a career function by nature, because they're there during the Trump administration and the Biden administration, someone that is involved in the disposition of classified documents or somebody in the intelligence agencies. Um, tell me if, if you think any of that is off base and tell me what you think about just the, the, the need to, to fact check a constant stream of disinformation from Trump. No, nothing's off base. This is really one of the silliest charges I've ever heard, and that's saying something. <laughs> I think it's pretty clear that the person is a career staffer in the White House, has something to do with the handling, but the person is a witness in a criminal investigation. <laughs> the idea that you wouldn't go for that reason and speak to that person. Look, there are rules for when you go to the White House. You must follow the rules. I myself went both as a career person and a political person. But one of the ones that would be unavoidable is this person is a witness. You go and talk to them and find out what happened. That is so, uh, you know, silly to try to, what, what were they supposed to do? Just ignore the witness? It, it's really um, uh, inane, even by the standards of some of these charges. Um it's really inane, even by Trump standards, is is um, is a lot coming from Harry. He's very, very measured. I mean, you who else are witnesses in the documents case? I mean, Cash Patel has some sort of limited immunity. The star witness, Evan Corcoran. I, I mean, Trump has much bigger problems than some career person that works in the government. Well, I also think one of the problems here is that these people do not believe that there could ever be these nonpartisan government workers right. who just were, like this is it's like a unicorn in Trump's right. mind. Yeah. Right. I mean, nobody would who would honestly do a job just to serve that country crazy. Right. Yeah. So I do think there's that. But also these people are trying to spin anything they can. Right. This is the Steve Bannon thing. Try to make everyone look corrupt. So your guy looks less corrupt. Um, that's so that's so I mean, I'm obsessed with this idea of relativity. I, I also think that we learned through news reports that they've annihilated the notion. And I think they use Mark Meadows testimony to do this, that there was any standing declassification order. If you've ever spent any time in the government or in national security, you know that it's impossible and implausible because if you declassify something, you have to tell all the people involved in gathering the declassified material. And so I always thought that was ludicrous, that that, that would even like make its way into the conversation. But it, it appears that it, it is a possibility. Again, I'm just theorizing that, that both the, the Meadows testimony about the non-existence of any standing declassification order and a visit to someone who would have been involved in, in the handling or, or what happened or the sort of chain of custody of classified material while Trump was president may be connected. I don't think the game is working anymore, right? <laughs> the game that Trump's been playing, the game Giuliani's been playing, the game all these guys have been playing for years is not working anymore. It's hitting all the guardrails. It's hitting the common sense factor. I mean, it's still working with a very deep base, but that yeah. base is even getting smaller. Right. So Narrower, the, cir but the circles are yeah. closing in with every indictment, with every new news cycle. The circle gets smaller and the tactics stay the same. And I think, you know, a couple years ago, I started saying that we wouldn't really get our world standing back until Trump did a perp walk. 
until he was in bracelets, until he was in jail. That would be the only time America would fully get our respect back in the world. People used to say I was crazy. We can see that now. He's got a mugshot. He's got four indictments. He may actually be held accountable. So I think we've got to think about that and how this is playing out on a global stage where our kids are watching and this game is not working anymore. They're being revealed and never underestimate Trump's sloppiness and incompetence, which is, I think, really the most underreported part of this. He's just a mess. So it's totally possible that he did all this stuff just because he's sloppy, careless and messy. Well, and he's also presumes, Harry, that everyone will be part of the criminal enterprise with him. I mean, that's what the RICO indictment reveals, right? All these willing participants in a criminal enterprise. Um, And and to, to Molly's point, that there won't be anyone who values the state, the government, the country, the men and women who gather the intelligence that leads to the classification in the first place. Who are, by the way, the vast majority of the government. So the assault on DOJ, for example, the 95 percent of career employees, that's who are really demoralized. To Paul's point, I I 100 percent agree, but I just want to say I think those two things are connected. I think there's a sort of visceral way in which the uh, the seeing of the mugshot and the like really are peeling away some among his base and making it come home in a real way that that I think has an, uh, some erosive effect uh, on the politics as well. And for sure, this is only going to continue. We're all taking a crash course in, you know, criminal procedure in the, uh, the, the, the politics of it uh, in Georgia and D.C.